What's up, everybody? It's your boy, man. Yeah, everybody know me. Everybody love me. This is going to be a little different than my usual videos. It's going to be a little less editing, a little more straightforward. But I had to share this movie with the world. It's Seventh and Westlake. It is a zombie hood movie. It's got Samuel Monroe Jr. It's got Smart Guy, yo. It came out pretty recently, too. 2019. It's on Amazon Prime right now. And it is just chaos, bro. Uh, before we get to the review, Ridge Wallets, y'all. Look at that. Everybody look at that. The Ridge makes those super stylish front pocket wallets. It's the future time, man. Y'all my friends, so I can say this. Get a new wallet, bro. You lacking. Ridge wallets are incredibly sturdy. They can hold up to 12 different cards, and there's plenty of room for your cash. There's over 30 different styles to choose from as well. And more importantly, that sturdy material means they all come with a lifetime warranty and a 45-day money-back guarantee. There's no risk whatsoever. These rich people really stand behind their product. I love it. It's made with RFID blocking technology that protects you from digital pickpocketers. I just moved to LA. I hear that type of stuff happens all the time here. Dudes will just walk into a crowd and scan random people's credit cards from inside their pockets. I don't know. I don't gotta worry about it though. You should check them out. Go to ridge.com slash prim and use the promo code prim for 10% off. They do free shipping and returns worldwide. Everybody will like you more if you get a Ridge. All your dreams will come true and all that. Again, ridge.com slash prim. Use the promo code prim at checkout. Get that discount. Your dream's not gonna come true though. Thank you, Ridge Wallets, for sponsoring the video. Y'all the real OGs, bro. <laughs> That's not funny. So the movie is about this pill that the government created that makes black people go crazy and kill each other. Except no, it's not really about that. That shit barely comes up, actually. There's so much other random hood movie nonsense that gets in the way. They trying to do way too much with this movie. It's unfortunate too. I feel like they have a cool concept here. Zombie black people? That's kind of stupid actually. Have been left unchecked. They took over sports, they took over entertainment, they put one in the White House. What we see now is the crack babies. Black lives matter, but we on a decline. Here come another cracker. Dr. Phil Stein. So Dr. Phil Stein is the scientist that invented the zombie black people pill or whatever. He's in a business meeting with his business partners and already, listen to the sound quality, bro. I thought my shit was bad. In the African American community, like uh, high blood pressure, diabetic medication, this kind of thing. I personally believe you've done an outstanding job with the drug, Philip. What more do you want? Philip says the drug makes them kill each other. Our hands are clean. And the job's done. Yeah, so we're off to a pretty bad start already. The main character, Nino, starts narrating, which makes everything better in my opinion. He starts narrating about his life and how the zombie drug first hit the streets. Basically, I was running a dope house off of 7th and Westlake. When my operation went bad, and niggas flipped the bitches. I ended up getting robbed of my supplies. When I finally got up out that truck, First person I touched just so happened to be the person that was carrying the drugs from Chicago to LA. Nino escapes from the kidnappers and he carjacks one of the scientist dudes. He takes some of the zombie pills thinking it's aspirin or whatever. Sure bro, that's a cool way to start your zombie apocalypse. He takes some zombie pills, he thought it was aspirin, and he a zombie now. <laughs> The dudes that kidnapped Nino are on the phone talking about what they should do with him. I guess they don't realize he broke out from the van already. Man, I done had this nigga on ice for a whole week for you, my nigga. What you want to do with this nigga? Hey, take this out, though. Keep that nigga in the trunk, though, man. Fuck no, I'm not leaving him in it. I'm telling you, man. I got a whole different concept, man. Just keep him on ice. They decide to leave Nino in the trunk of the van and not even check on him, which is a poor decision to say the least. What the fuck? Is this a laundromat though? Why would they leave him here of all places? It's a busy spot. He could easily call for help or make some noise or something. Some little kids just came and opened the door like it was nothing. This shit wasn't even locked. And he not even tied up. These niggas left him untied at a busy laundromat in a handicapped parking spot. The bitch nigga ain't gonna do me like that. Yeah, 
Nigga can't do me no like that. I'ma get my razor blade carve a new tech. We get some more of this cool music now and this little montage they do. Well, no, it's not a montage. It's the damn credits. I thought we already did the credits. What the hell was all this then? Y'all doing too much, bro. Just start the movie. All this extra shit is really not engaging. You don't have the luxury of doing this long ass build up. You already made niggas sit through a bunch of credits and that whole meeting scene just now. Get to the point, bro. Hey, so the chick's name is Peaches. She's actually Nino's girlfriend. I know. No explanation either. It's a movie though. It's fine. What's up, Peaches? What's up, Peaches? Peaches. Peaches. What's up? What's going on? Listen, T-Mac. What's going on? That nigga Nino is still missing. What? Peaches tells this dude T-Mac that Nino is still missing. Then it just goes to the next scene. Okay, thank you T-Mac. He not in the fucking movie no more. We're at some weed dispensary now. Peaches walks in. She's still looking for Nino. She's still a bad actor. She's still fat as shit. It's all good. Omar Gooden runs the dispensary, and apparently him and Peaches have some sort of history together. Damn, girl, I ain't seen you in what, like, about 10 years? <laughs> Motherfucking Peaches, girl. You think you was just gonna walk in this motherfucker after 10 years and I'm supposed to forget that you motherfucking cut my throat? We both know that I saved your life that night, and it was about to kill your ass. Uh, Peaches goes on to explain that she only cut his throat because she was trying to trick whoever was really trying to kill him. All right, that's fine. We'll leave that alone. Well, big, I need your help. I need you to find somebody for me. So what's in it for me? Big, money. A lot of money. Nigga, I could fucking barely hear this shit. A lot of money. They obviously didn't have a sound guy. They just used the microphone attached to the camera or some shit. Y'all niggas didn't rehearse this shit or something before you started filming? Like, y'all ain't doing a practice scene just to hear what this shit sound like? You should have known it was going to sound like this, bro. I don't feel bad for roasting you. I am going a little hard, though. It's fine, bro. I'm sorry. It's a good movie. We finally cut back to Nino and he's slowly transforming into a zombie. He goes over to his homie Chris' house and his girl answers the door. She's scared because he a zombie. She hates zombies. Zombie hood movie. Nino, is that you? If Chris in there, I need to see what? Chris. Chris! He's bleeding from the motherfucking face. I'm what? not letting him in and you're not letting him in either. We cut over to these other random ass characters. They clearly just the director homeboys trying to be funny or something. I don't have time to include all these random people. Let's go back to the Nino storyline. Zombie Nino says he gotta go take a shit, so Chris lets him in the house. The girlfriend don't like that though. She don't like zombies taking a shit in her house. You let me take a shit, I'm a shit right here. But they both forget about zombie Nino when they see there's somebody else in his car. Chris finds the dead body of that white dude that Nino carjacked. He calls one of his homies and explains the whole Nino situation. All while he's just standing outside, his girlfriend is in the house alone with a zombie. I guess he forgot about that. Nigga, what the fuck was that? Oh my god. I thought that shit was supposed to turn you to a zombie. This nigga turned to a fucking designer. <laughs> Nino attacks the girl, but Chris comes in and he knocks him out. Then some other chick pops up and she wakes Nino up and takes him to safety. No idea who she's supposed to be. She got a fat ass though, so put her in the movie, sure. Get this motherfucker out of here right now. Or I'm gonna shoot one of you motherfuckers. Fuck wrong with y'all. You got your keys? Yes. Take my car, and I'm gonna take yours. Can you drive? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, follow me. Uh, no, this nigga most definitely cannot drive. This nigga a zombie. 
And he just got knocked unconscious. Why don't you just drive him home? Why don't you even come here if you're not going to be helpful? You going to make this nigga drive home? Everybody's favorite scary hood nigga Samuel Monroe Jr. is here now. It's good to see him still doing stuff, man. He an all-star. That being said, he is definitely phoning this shit in the entire time. Mommy, that's cool right now. Yeah, I know where she at. She didn't left me with the... Who you like doing your hair better? I thought you said I, when I do it, 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 it hurt like your hair start... Samuel Monroe Jr. is hanging out with his daughter when he gets this overly loud ass phone call. And what do you know? Here comes another cracker, Dr. Phil Stein. Dr. Phil Stein. Dr. Phil Stein says he needs Samuel Monroe Jr. to do a mission for him or something. He says they have a mutual friend and he offers a hundred thousand dollars or whatever. No, I can't follow oh, you. One hundred thousand to make it your problem. We cut back over to Nino and he's having some sort of weird, hilarious zombie dream. Nino, what you doing here? So this is the part where I must be dreaming. Bitch, what the fuck you doing here? I can't get all this up. That's because everybody in the game is dirty. He wakes up and he reunites with Peaches finally. She asks him what the fuck is going on, but he just brushes her off. Then she asks whose house is this, which is a very good ass question, by the way. Damn, what the fuck? Whose house is this? Is this where the fuck you been in all this time? Nah, bitch, Shit. I've been in the motherfucking truck dying, bitch. Nino! You here? I'm Peaches. Nino Zero. I did your man a favor, which is evidently more what you can do for him. Fuck you and this damn house. It's later now, and Nino starts talking about how he left some money at some building, I think. I don't know what the hell's going on. I literally can't hear them. Well, I got Nino's drop off, man. And I got you to tell me where the fuck you might be keeping your ass at. So Nino runs off, Peaches gets annoyed again. Listen to how she delivers this line though. It sounds so genuine. It makes you kind of feel bad for her. I feel like she's really kind of annoyed here. I'm good, I'll be back. I'll be back. That nigga crazy as fuck. Okay, so jumping ahead a little bit, Nino goes to see some sort of pimp ball head dude. He got a bunch of big booty hoes. It's a pretty good time, actually. I'm starting to feel like they made this movie just so they can invite all these bitches over and say they making a movie. This is just the director and his friends trying to get some bitches, I think, bro. We go back to Samuel Monroe Jr. and he's still doing that mission for Dr. Phil Stein. Dr. Phil Stein. So long story short, Dr. Phil Stein hires Samuel Monroe Jr. to find out what happened to the pills. He teams up with this guy and now they're looking for the pills. That's his thing. Get your best ears and eyes to work, nigga, because we own it. These three goons walk up on zombie Nino and they say they're looking for Nino. We find out later that they work for Smart Guy O, but that's not important. Prepare yourself for this scene that's coming up. You thought shit was crazy before. Look how Nino handles these goons. Who the fuck is you, nigga? Now calm down, calm down. Look for Nino? Yeah, we're looking for Nino. Yeah, nigga, Nino. So at this point, we're halfway through the movie and he still hasn't technically killed anybody yet. Like he killed the one dude that he carjacked. That was before he even took the pills though. And that dude wasn't even black. Your zombie pills are trash, Dr. Phil Stein. Dr. Phil Stein. Also, he's not really much of a zombie. He's more like a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. He did eat the eyeball though. That's something a zombie would do. I don't know. I still don't fully understand the side effects of this drug. But Nino goes to see a smart guy, yo, to confront him. They about to have a final showdown now or something. But first we get another party scene with all these random ass characters. At this point, I am convinced this movie was made solely to get bitches. It's unorthodox, but I like it. Nasty ass shirts you got on. Man, don't get these motherfuckers out my motherfucking house, my nigga. Oh. 
Wait, I'm hella confused now. So did he kill Smart Guy, yo? I'm sure they'll explain it later. Anyway, he starts turning into Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde again. Now he about to kill somebody, finally. Samuel Monroe Jr. ends up finding the zombie pills somehow. Instead of taking them back to Dr. Phil Stein like he is supposed to, he takes them to these other random ass characters. They end up testing it in their hood laboratory, if you can believe it. Hey, I just look like this, but I'm intelligent than a motherfucker. You've lost it? I take full responsibility, but I still need you to tell me who is responsible for delivering the drug. I can have your head cut off. I need some time to find the drug. You got 24 hours. Man, this lady is fucking crazy. I don't know where they found this lady at, but I really like her. I feel like she should be in all movies made from now on. Okay, I gotta skip to the end now. This has gone on way too long. There's so many random one-off characters. There's some essays now. Nino's going to war with some essays. It's chaos, bro. Like I said, I really got to skip all this. What's up, bro? What's happening? Look, I just wanted you to find Nino. I ain't want y'all to try to kill him. He showed up hella motherfucking disrespect. My niggas had to put him here. I don't know you. I know your bitch, nigga. You said you were slipping and you need some help. Man. Nigga. Okay, so skipping all that, we now go back to Smart Guy Yo, who's, guess what? Having another party. Nigga, that was an 84. Niggas was like 23, 24. Balling. Balling. Bro, is that Boo Capone? What the hell are you doing here, Boo Capone? And they got baptized at uh, Rita Franklin funeral. <laughs> Nino busts in and he confronts the smart guy, yo, about fucking his girl and sending the goons his way or whatever. They start pointing guns everywhere. Oh God, please leave Boo Capone out of this. Whatever you do, don't kill Boo Capone. That nigga David Lucas rent a room at the Taco Bell. <laughs> Nino stops and he starts giving this heartwarming speech now about how the hood needs to change or something. You see motherfuckers go through this motherfucking earth thinking they can just do shit to motherfuckers and, and, and think ain't nobody holding them accountable for that shit. They end up with a motherfucker like me, big and bad and they motherfucking ass. That's me, nigga. Fuck. Oh shit. Nino. He turns into Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde again, and all hell finally breaks loose. You better not kill Boo Capone, though, I swear to God. Nino, get out of here! Where the fuck you think you going, homie? Man, I'm gonna take this safe. Damn, how did he do that? That shit was like lightning fast, right? It was so cool that Zombie Nino and his friends couldn't help but sit there and watch him and let him do it. Whoever engineered this drug, they made this drug just to affect black people only. It could be dangerous, nigga. Okay. Possible irreversible side effects. Wow. Good shit, bro. I was skeptical at first. This climax is definitely worth it. This scene alone, the action is superb. You should have been doing shit like this the whole time. Instead of filming random house parties and calling it a movie. It's the end now. We see Samuel Monroe Jr. enjoying his life. His girl ends up finding all the money and just watch. I told you I don't want dope money in my house. First of all, it's not dope money. <laughs> What's up, nephew? Yeah, the movie just ends here. So abruptly. They show a clip of Nino. What the fuck just happened right now? Uh, they did get Snoop Dogg on their ending credits song, which is pretty cool, actually. You know, it seems like these guys were just having a lot of fun making their own movie. They forgot to make it entertaining, though, which sucks for me as a viewer, but hey, I'm sure they got plenty of ass off this movie. Lucky for them, it still works out, and it's still entertaining to a degree. Some of the shots were actually pretty okay, uh, the sound was horrible though. Get a sound guy next time. Go watch the movie, man. It's funny as hell. It's on Amazon right now. I cannot wait till the sequel where Nino gets his revenge. 
again. Thank you, Ridge Wallets. Ridge.com slash Prim. Use promo code Prim at checkout. Thank you, Patreon guys. And thank you, regular ass viewers. Y'all want me to cover more low budget hood movies in this sort of style? Let me know how it went. Let me know all your thoughts. Go watch my other videos too. I love you, no pause. Okay, goodbye. Nah, bitch, I've been in the motherfucking truck dying, bitch.